Welcome to 52 Miniatures, my name is Alex. In this video I'm going to do a kit bash of a fantasy miniature for Age of Sigmar, Industra, the Celestial Spear. But I'm also going to go through what I think about the tools I use, you know, the concept of kit bashing, in case you're new to it, or just need some inspiration along the way. So this is the sprue for Industra. She comes out of the Dominion box, which was a starter kit for uh, Age of Sigmar a few years back. And uh, I haven't built her yet. She's supposed to go into my army, but she's got this sort of angelical vibe going. She's got like the spear of holy something and the sword of uh, mighty smiting. Um, and she's got wings, like angel wings. The thing is my army is sort of, uh, Roman inspired, um, Stormcast from Age of Sigmar are kind of Roman inspired, but mine is taking it to another level. And Wings doesn't really do it for me, as well as a lot of the sort of details and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's, it's just too much. Uh, so I'm going to kit bash her, give her new wings, and, you know, maybe remove some details, add new details and stuff like that. And that's step one of kit bashing. Why are you doing it? Obviously, there's plenty of reasons. First off, because it's fun. For me, still playing an established game like Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40,000, there might be details in the sculpts that you buy that you just think, you know, I just want to change some things because it'll fit my idea of my army better. There might be, you know, because you're playing other games a bit more free when it comes to miniatures like Silver Bayonet or Majestic 13, where you just want to completely create your own miniature. And with the need you have, you also probably get an idea, you know, like uh, I need something that looks a bit more Roman. You might need something that looks like it's been infested with uh, some kind of rot from outer space or it's got tentacles everywhere because it's, you know, whatever. That's step one, your idea. Step two is finding bits. So in this case, I already had Industra. She came with a box that I bought. Uh, it's taken me ages to figure out what to do with the wings until this fellow turned up, which is, uh, this is just the leftover sprue from a Warhammer 40,000 miniature called Vashdor. It's got these really strange mechanic sort of wings that I thought, that's a good fit. I've then got some uh, helmets that I bought. They're sort of resin helmets that are sort of gladiator style. And so then sort of my idea crept along and I thought, okay, it's Industra the Gladiator. Why not? Because obviously kit bashing means you need different kits to bash. And this is a fairly sort of expensive version, you know. Uh, Vashdor is an expensive model. Industra is probably expensive if you can buy her separately. I don't know. That doesn't have to be the case. This is just my example of what I'm working on at the moment. You could just be swapping heads, swapping weapons, using all the bits that you get after, you know, buying miniatures for a few years. And there's all these bits everywhere and you just realize, hey, wait a minute, this, is, this isn't bits, this is potential kit bashing material. And so what do you need? What kind of tools do you need? I guess this is uh, step three. Same thing there. Doesn't have to be tons of things, but I'm going to go through what I use and you can just pick up what you think is necessary for your kit bash. Obviously, you're going to need things like uh, pliers, glue. I prefer the plastic cement kind when I'm uh, working with plastic miniatures. Uh, I tend to use sprue goo, which is essentially uh, sprue dissolved in plastic cement. And you get this sort of, uh, you know, you just dissolve it in there and you get this sort of kind of a paste thing uh, that's actually in the end made out of sprue plastic. So when it's dried, it just turns into the same material as you're working with. And that can be used to sort of fill gaps and things like that. And you can then sand it down. For bigger gaps that might, you know, turn up, or worst case scenario, there's actually some bits that you kind of need to shape to look like something because you didn't find the right bit to fill things perfectly. I like to use green stuff and milliput. Now all these things I'm going to go through in the video while I'm working on Industrial. This is just sort of a, a bit of a checklist. If you're going to do some sculpting, there's obviously things like sculpting tools. You can sort of buy ones out of silicon or you can actually make your own out of 
whatever leftover green stuff and milliput bits you've got lying around, preferably before they dry. Sometimes attaching certain bits, attaching larger bits, or just being able to sort of attach a bit and fiddle around with it a bit without it falling off because there's no glue. I sometimes enjoy pinning, which is basically drilling a hole, adding a bit of metal in between, sort of sticking, you know, like armature. We'll do some of that as well. Maybe some files to sand things down. But let's get started with Industra and see whatever tools we need along the way. Industria here doesn't only come with like a hero base, uh, she's also a push fit model, which is something that Games Workshop do. And uh, these can be sometimes trickier to kit bash. You know, there's one type of miniatures where you get a torso, uh, arms, legs, head, and kit bashing them by just swapping out the legs or the heads or the arms is relatively easy. Whereas these push fit models, sometimes you have to sort of assemble them first and then start cutting them to bits. Now there's quite a few details on this model that I actually want to remove. I want to make her simpler. Uh, it, you know, all these flashy bits and like, uh, you know, evangelical whatever it is, it doesn't fit my image of a gladiator. And so I'm just essentially just going to cut them off. And this is more like altering a sculpt, not so much kit bashing. Uh, but it's something I think is kind of nice to remember that you can, you know, if you don't like some of the bits on your miniature, you can just cut them off. And it's now time to start adding some bits uh, from other manufacturers. I have these gladiator heads. Um, I'm not actually, sh can't remember. Max Mini is where they're from. Uh, they're resin sort of gladiator helmets. So we need to get one of those on there. I'm also not quite sure about the sword. Her sword is a bit too fancy. I have this uh, Conquest Mini, which is very sort of uh, Roman, and I'm going to see if I can use this Roman Gladius, I don't know, sword uh, instead. They're different scale, but it might work. And this is the thing with kit bashing. I mean, the bits you use, they don't need to come from the same manufacturer. They don't need necessarily to be the same scale. Uh, they don't actually need to be miniature bits. You could, you know, kit bash armor with whatever plastic bits you find. It might even be trash. You might 3D print heads, you might 3D print shoulder pads, you might use bits from other game systems. You can essentially use whatever you got. And if you've been in the hobby for a while, then usually there tends to be a lot of bits around. If you haven't, then, uh, you know, start buying more miniatures, I guess, or start looking through the trash. And spikes. Why so many spikes? But seriously, removing these spikes just drastically alters the look of the entire spear, celestial or not. And so because of the fancy sort of push fit uh, type of model, I removed the head uh, before I glued everything together. Uh, yeah, the, pu the push fits are a bit tricky when it comes to kit bashing, but you know, sometimes it's easier to just remove bits and pieces before you glue everything together, or you just assemble the entire model and then disassemble it to then, you know, glue other bits on. Changing out the sword for the uh, Conquest Mini sword worked out real well. This is more of a, you know, uh, it just fits the gladiator vibe better. It's a bit off scale, like it's a bit thick, but you know, if we're in a sort of tabletop situation, then things are more forgiving. Because the sword is, you know, uh, it sticks out, you can sort of accidentally hit things while you're moving your mini around on the table. I pinned the sword uh, to the hand. Uh, it also just makes the gluing process easier. So usually what I do is I drill a hole and then I put this steel wire with a little bit of super glue on it and push that into the hole. And then I use that bit with the steel armature in it to, you know, make a bit of a mark of where I should drill the connecting hole. Usually works pretty well. I also pinned the helmet. This is mainly because the helmet piece is made out of resin, so I need to use super glue to glue these two bits together because, you know, the plastic glue only works with the plastic glue. So now I have to use CA glue or super glue to glue the helmet to the rest of the body. Only I find super glue can be a bit brittle and the head is in, again in a vulnerable spot on the tabletop. And so I just want to make sure that everything just is stuck together properly. So then, uh, you know, pinning is a good option. And now let's see what we can do with these 
wings. I think they're kind of massively oversized, but you know, what are you gonna do if you're a gladiator with uh, cyberpunk wings? Again, Games Workshop, what's up with all the spikes? And the skulls, Games Workshop, why always all the skulls? But seriously, you know, some might consider this being uh, a lot of work, but I found that in the process of kit bashing, finding some of these things like removing spikes and drilling away on these skulls just gives me a bit of extra time to consider the next steps of the kit bash. I solved the puzzle of getting things looking cool uh, by actually flipping the wings the wrong way around. So you've got this kind of sun feather thing going instead of, you know, uh, the opposite of a sun feather, a moon feather. I'm not sure we're Roman anymore. We might be sort of more Hindu kind of goddess vibes, but uh, I'm digging it, so that's fine. I managed to use the same attach points, and so, you know, the proportions are kind of correct and, and the angling of the wings is kind of correct, but there was a hole behind, you know, in her back that the original wings would have covered, which these didn't. And this is when I used the sprue goo. My sprue goo has turned kind of thick. I need to pour more glue in there to make it a bit more runny. But it actually, you know, it kind of works nice in a thick state as well, because using just plastic cement on a toothpick or on a little brush you can get, if you get the Tamiya extra thin or thin uh, plastic cement, you can sort of sculpt the, 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 the goo around a little bit and it actually works pretty well. After drilling the holes it was a bit messy and I used my needle files to sort of try and clean things up, but this type of plastic is a little bit, I'm not going to say soft, but it's sometimes difficult to sort of sand down and use files and stuff like that. And to get a really nice or at least smooth uh, finish, you can actually use plastic cement to sort of clean up because it just finally melts down that little scrape from the file and, and leaves a pretty uh, even surface. Now Industra, the celestial gladiator, is actually pretty much done. There's a few things I want to change on the base. Uh, there's these uh, sort of steps that she's standing on and inside of the steps there's these letters which is it's just over complicating things uh, and it's just drawing too much attention so I actually want to cover this up using some milliput and uh, some green stuff. We're going to be using a, a mixture of green stuff and milliput and uh, about half and half. Both of these are epoxy putties uh, but they have different properties. Uh, milliput is, uh, you know, when, when it cures, it cures very, very hard, so you can sort of sand it down, whereas uh, green stuff is a bit more soft and tacky. And sort of uh, sculpting with milliput is really a bit more difficult because it's sort of grainy, uh, whereas sculpting with green stuff is nicer because it's sort of, uh, you know, like a clay, a sort of tacky clay. But to get the properties of both, you kind of just mix them up. So you get a sort of uh, nice sculpting, you know, something that you can sculpt and that sticks to the miniature. Uh, but when you're done, you can still sort of sand it down and, and stuff like that if you need to. And so uh, we're mixing 50-50. Now this is a really uh, simple sort of sculpting job. It's just filling some gaps. Uh, I've had plenty of kit bashes where there's more sort of sculpting going on, you know, where you need to fill out a bit of an arm or some flesh or try and fix a piece of armor and stuff like that. This is obviously something that uh, requires a bit of practice, but can be an valuable tool when kit bashing because you can actually sort of sculpt some bits that are missing. When using epoxy putties like this, I tend to just use water uh, as lubricant between the tool and the putty. Uh, there's also the possibility to use things like Vaseline and stuff like that, but then you probably need to clean the miniature uh, before priming it. If you find the putty a bit too difficult to work with, like it's just sticking too much to the tools or just shaping a bit too sort of uh, easily, then just wait a little bit, you know. Uh, a putty like this maybe takes, I don't know, you can, you can check that up, but maybe an hour or more to cure. But if you wait for 10 or 20 minutes, then it sort of starts to cure a little bit. It gets a bit harder and it can be a little bit more easy to sculpt with if you're trying to sculpt sort of sharp details. 
once you're done, there's probably tons of putty left. There always is for me. I sometimes make tools out of them or sometimes just slap them down on the base like this so that when I cover it with some kind of a basing paste or texture paste, then I've got a little bit of a uh, sort of uh, elevation going. Green stuff and Miller putt usually sticks to your fingers and using uh, hand sanitizer, because it's alcohol in there, is a pretty handy way of getting rid of it if you've got other types of alcohol and want to, you know, waste your uh, whiskey on cleaning your fingers, go ahead, but this is probably cheaper. And there we are. Industra the uh, Celestial Gladiator. Uh, my latest kit bash. I hope you like it. Hopefully I get to paint this miniature soon. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Check out the Patreon uh, if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you.